freedom of expression. Refuse under any circumstances to shut up. If, we, if vast numbers of people did that, this is the key to it all, what are they going to do? They don't have the numbers. We can stop focusing worship on celebrities and television and fake politicians and even uh, sport. Not that I don't enjoy sport, but as long as it's their peripheral vision and not here, the worship, externalizing. And this is the biggest thing we can do. Human race, get off your knees. What are we doing down there? What are you doing? You're all that here's as he been and ever can be. Where are your bloody knees for? Well, I'm only little me. No. If we get off our knees, the control system's over. Martin Luther King said, a man can't ride your back unless it's bent. And then there's the people in dark suits and uniforms. Hey, you got children and grandchildren and families as well. What are you doing serving a control system that wishes to impose a fascist date on your families? What are you going to say to your kids when the, the control system's in and it's controlling every facet of their bloody lives? Daddy, mummy, granddad, grandma, what were you doing when the control system came in? I was helping to do it, dear. All the best with that conversation. What are we doing? Playing a part in, oh, it's me job. We'll get a bloody another one then. We're going to do this to our children because it's my job. What can we do? We can cease to serve the control system in uniform with a gun in our hands. We can do that. Soldiers are not there serving their country, serving their people. They're there serving the cabal that's seeking to enslave their people and their families. As Einstein said, the pioneers of a warless world are the youth that refuse military service. And more are equal to that, the adults beyond military service who support those that refuse to serve this control system in uniform. Oh no, you've got to serve your country. You serve your bloody country. I ain't doing it. Just like those wonderful Israeli young people. <laughs> know thyself. When you know thyself, when you know you are consciousness, think consciousness is going to get a machine gun and start shooting at aspects of itself. Mind does that. Mind fights. Consciousness doesn't even contemplate it. And that doesn't include just people in uniform. It means fighting for freedom. What's all that about? Let's fight for freedom. Let's, uh, let's have a riot in Athens and let's kill three people from the banking system. Hey, the world's a better place now. What you fight, you become. We don't want to fight this system. We need to cease to cooperate with it. This is a meeting of mind. One mind on a horse, one mind with something in its hand trying to do damage. Oh, they're two sides. They're one mind without consciousness. Freedom fighters, contradiction in terms. Cognitive dissonance. As Martin Luther King said, the limitation of riots, moral questions aside, is that they cannot win and their participants know it. Hence, rioting is not revolutionary but reactionary because it invites defeat. It involves an emotional catharsis, but it must be followed by a sense of futility. They want people to riot. It justifies more control. 
nor do we need to meet this challenge with hate. That's playing away in the stadium we're trying to rid the world of. We don't need to hate these people. We just need to stop cooperating with them. Well, you know, if it's all the same with you, mate, I ain't doing it, OK? No hard feelings. Bugger off. And then we've got this, you know, the protest, the mass protest. I do understand that. It might have a part to play. But so many times these protests, they're what I call steam whistles. You know, people go out in big protests with the banners and they, they kind of feel good about themselves and they go down the pub and say, oh, at least we made our feelings felt. And then what happens, bugger all? How many people marched in London against the invasion of Iraq and what happened? Iraq was invaded. Protesting has such limitation. They don't care if we protest and walk through the streets and shout slogans and wave banners. They care if we come together, irrespective of colour, creed, gender, sexuality, any of it. Put our differences aside and unite behind what affects us all and all our families. This control system, this Orwellian agenda, is not trying to enslave black people or Jewish people or middle-class Americans or Hispanics or Australians or Indians. It's trying to enslave all of us. And what it wants to do is divide the target population against itself through these fake, ridiculous fault lines of race, religion, income bracket, so that we divide and rule the target population and they can pick us off one by one. They are terrified of us putting down those fake fault lines and coming together and uniting behind what we should all believe in, freedom for all, irrespective of who we are. Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Someone else's injustice is our injustice. Because if we allow injustice there, eventually that injustice will come here anyway. In the end, we will remember not the words of our enemies, but the silence of our friends. Silence is consent. Can you hear us now? Silence is consent. Because while we're silent on these impositions, the impositions just keep going on and on and on. By our silence, we are acquiescing, even agreeing to them being imposed. The end of silence, the end of acquiescence. If we want to be free, then don't run and hide. Because you can put your head in the sand and ignorance is bliss, but only for a while. You can put your head in the sand because there's a tornado coming. But the tornado is still coming, your bum's in the air. If you lift it out the sand, take responsibility and face it, you can take avoiding action. Ignorance is bliss with a head in the sand and then, bang, your ass is spinning up in the clouds. Strength does not come from physical capacity, it comes from an indomitable will, Mahatma Gandhi. Isn't it amazing how true that is? How you can see soldiers in uniform involved in truly extraordinary levels of physical courage and what we call heroism. And yet those same people are terrified of saying boo to another guy in uniform who's got more stripes on his arm than he has. Isn't it amazing with physical strength can come so easily, and moral strength not. That's to do with the moon matrix and the way that we're, our perception is, is uh, manipulated. Turkish proverb, a lion sleeps in the heart of every brave man, every brave woman, and it's not really bravery. When you let go of fear, you don't need bravery, you don't need courage. Courage is overcoming fear. When you let go of fear, because I'm all that is, has been, and ever will be, what's the worst that can happen to me? I leave this physical body of limitation, and I become all that is, has been, and ever will be, uh, in full awareness that that is what I am. My God, I'm terrified that that might happen. I don't know how I'm going to cope with the terror of thinking that might happen. Know thyself. Again, recurring theme, know thyself. We are consciousness. What is there to fear? Death? There is no death. Just putting the telescope down. 
We can meet this with fear. Oh my God, the police state! Or we can treat it with the emotion it deserves. <laughs> eh? What we have to do is comply. Compliance! That's what we have to do. Because if we don't comply, the control system's in desperate trouble. So it has to frighten us into complying for fear of not complying and the consequences that come from that. Well, hold on a second here. There's something about this that ain't right. When we look at this structure, we look there for the power. But why is that there? Because these silly sods are holding it up there. This is the power. They have to persuade them that they have the power so they don't, they don't take the power to bring that crashing down. Fear of bringing it down through fear of not complying. Once we step out of the pyramid and refuse to cooperate with it, no violence necessary, by the way, then the pyramid starts to collapse because we're holding it together. It's a house of cards. That's all it is. Oh, it's the control system. It's a house of cards. Simple thing. People are being fined ridiculous amounts of money for putting their weedy bins out on the wrong day or too many inches from the bloody curb. And people go, I don't know what's the world coming to. It's the big brother state, in it. And then what are you going to do? Uh, what time's that game show on, honey? Terrible and bloody thing, I don't know. What? What's that going to do? Don't tell me. That's big brother. It's little, little, little me that's causing that, not big brother. What if thousands of people, when someone is fined, that money for that ridiculous thing. And like I say, they're just giving us more and more ridiculous things to see how much we'll take before we resist. And when we don't, they give us even more ridiculous things. What would happen if when someone is faced with that fine, thousands and thousands of people in that area put their wheelie bins out in the wrong place on the wrong day, week after week after week after week? The system couldn't cope. We have the numbers. And I see this, your vote is your voice, be heard. Bollocks it is. How can the vote be your voice when the people you're given the choice of voting for that have any chance of forming a government are standing on the same postage stamp of political uh, policy and perception? There's no choice. We've reached a point now where the vote becomes a voice when we refuse to vote. We refuse to play the game anymore. What would have happened at this recent election, this farce, if tens of millions of people had said, we've had a bellyful, we're not voting, it only encourages them. We are not voting because we're going to make a statement that we know this system is rigged and we're having it no more. What would have happened in these, in these days that have passed since that election? The whole focus of the media and everything would have been, bloody hell, what's going on? Why this mass refusal not to vote? Now we've got a debate going. Now we're looking at why people haven't voted because the system is rigged. Now the system has to bloody start to change because it's lost um, its credibility. But instead, the majority trotted along to vote because they said, well, if you don't vote for them, they might get in. It doesn't matter! They're masks on the same face. So what if they get in? Same thing will bloody happen. Comply! No! No, no! Not if it's enslaving me and my children and imposing on my freedom. Comply! Leave your home now, it's foreclosed. No! 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 Let's follow this through, shall we? Millions of